Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of Character Matters, the program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that has plagued us for some time now, and that affects every single aspect of our lives. In fact, you can't find a human problem either a relational problem, a social problem, even a political problem that can't be traced directly to the character issue. We human beings have always had our character-related problems. We're not perfect people. We have inherent weaknesses as well as strengths. And we sometimes come from inadequate and troubled, even traumatic, formative environments but we have it within us to be the best that we can be once we embrace and take to heart the principles and the values that I so strongly advocate and talk about in my book, Essentials for the Journey. Today, I'd like to talk about one of the most troubling aspects of the more malignant forms of narcissism, and that has to do with what one early researcher, a pioneer actually, in the field, called the senseless and remorseless use and abuse of others that characterized the more malignant forms of narcissism. In fact, this researcher coined the term psychopathy. Some folks prefer the term sociopathy, both of which are different from antisocial behavior which is different from the common conceptualization of antisocial behavior, but that's another program. Unfortunately, within the field of mental health and psychology and all kinds of helping disciplines, there is unfortunately a tendency to misuse and to inadequately define certain terms that make their way into the general discourse and into common parlance but are often misunderstood because of how improperly they're used. But in any case, this researcher took notice of the behavior of certain individuals who appeared to have virtually no conscience and who were so self-centered and were so self-aggrandizing, so seemingly uncaring of others, and so willing, as he put it, to, quote, senselessly and remorselessly use and abuse others, end quote, that this kind of malignant narcissism expressed as either psychopathy or sociopathy was really a form of insanity, which is why he used the term psychopathy. He called it a type of moral insanity because it seemed so irrational to him, so unthinkable that somebody could be so devoid of human empathy, of the capacity for care and concern for another, that they would wantonly and without remorse use and abuse others exploit others, take advantage of others, and with no compunction. We know, of course, that this is not a form of insanity, but it is the most serious type and level of character disturbance. I talk about all the various levels of character disturbance and all the various types in my book, Character Disturbance. But suffice it to say, that the most troubling folks among us are those who appear to have little compunction about what they do that's destructive and exploitative within their relationships. It used to boggle the mind that such people even existed. Today, we've become frighteningly used to it, even to a degree, tolerant of it. And it will, perhaps, be the death of us. 
or at least cause us untold suffering. Unless we wake up, and unless we make character matter again, and quit putting other things before it, restore it to the prime importance it's supposed to have. Let me talk just a little bit about something I've written about many times on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. Perhaps some of my most widely read articles are on the topics of regret, remorse, and contrition. So let me spend a little time again explaining the difference. Almost all of us, including the seriously character disturbed among us, can have practical regret for some of the egregious behaviors that we might display. Regret has to do with what the behavior costs us. And there are many times when even the most seriously character-impaired people among us will have regret for something they did going too far, a senseless injury they caused. They might have troubled feelings about what it cost them. That's regret. Remorse is different. It has to do with genuine upset over the injury caused another. And that requires at least some degree of empathy. And what troubled all of the researchers in the fields of psychopathy and sociopathy, even antisocial behavior, is that some folks seem to be troublingly okay with exploiting, using, and abusing others for their own personal gain. Some folks who have some level of conscience, and in most cases would not think of exploiting or of using or abusing another, have a remarkable capacity to compartmentalize. This is another misused term, by the way, egregiously misused term. It has to do with the mental sealing off or compartmentalization of a behavior when you're in the mode of exploitation or use or abuse. In other words, under most circumstances where a person wouldn't engage in an egregious behavior, they somehow make it okay when they want something bad enough or are getting something they want enough that they're willing to set aside, compartmentalize in their mind the egregious nature of what they're doing while they're doing it to set aside all feelings that they might otherwise have, including feelings of some level of empathy. Now, the most seriously character-impaired people among us, the most malignant narcissists, the folks that I call the predatory personalities in my books In Sheep's Clothing and Character Disturbance, these folks might have some level of regret for the horrible things that they do. They might even have a twinge of remorse, but the one thing they can't experience is what I call contrition. I'm not the only one that uses that term, by the way. It has a meaning. The contrite person, by definition, is crushed in spirit. They're heartbroken. And why are they heartbroken? precisely because of the heartbreak they realized that they caused another. And contrite people necessarily do certain things because there's damage to repair. The contrite person stops offering any excuses, quits blaming other people, and goes about the work of repairing the damage they know that they did, the damage to the relationship, the damage to the well-being of another, and they make it their business to restore. 
That's how you know when someone has the aspects of character to be a truly loving partner in whatever the enterprise. And I'll have more to say about this in some upcoming episodes of Character Matters and also in some future blog articles on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. Now, I had hoped to announce uh, the tentative date for the next live broadcast, but I'm afraid I have to postpone that just a bit because I'll be undergoing some uh, medical procedures in the next week or so, and um, I'm going to have to put that off just a bit. But stay tuned for an announcement pretty soon about the next live edition of Character Matters, where you can join the conversation and ask questions and participate in the discussion. So until the next time, I thank you for tuning in. I encourage you to avail yourself of all my books easily available on Amazon and uh, of all the free articles on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. Till next time, take care.